Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here, back with session four, day one of TED AI. This is the last session of speakers. It's already been mind blowing. And now we come to a whole new area of AI. AI regarding art and storytelling was session four. They had some very cool people speaking. So session four was very cool. It started off with the rapper Kay Flay uh, doing a performance. I hadn't heard of her before, but I'm sure many of you have. Anyway, she's really famous. Maybe five to 10 years ago, Kay Flay lives in San Francisco. Then next up, Cristobal Valenzuela, who has built an application called Runway, and it's used with regard for film. So basically he said, films are a tool for human storytelling. And then he said, let's go back in history to 1863. The Paris Salon rejected a bunch of artists for acceptance into it that would later become very, very famous. These artists. This rejection started Impressionism, a huge change in art. Then came photography right about that same time. A few, some of the oldest pictures of, are of the Civil War during the same period. Photography is digital storytelling. And then movies, the motion picture camera changed everything, or video camera, he said, changed everything for storytelling. So Cristobal said, AI is a new kind of camera. He started his company Runway two years ago they made their first video from AI, and since then in two years, that's 2021, by 2023, they've made huge progress. What Runway does is turn spoken words into huge virtual worlds in movies. He said it can use text or image to create these movies, and you can also change the motion in the system. He said, Basically, it took 150 years from the advent of photography to AI. So what used to take a very long time to develop, now a whole new iteration develops in only a few years. So that was very cool. Next up was Stacy Spikes, who works for one of the big movie studios and does film distribution to theaters and he talked about AI and film distribution. So he said when he was a kid, he saw Blade Runner, the original one, and it changed his life. He said, how big are movies? Movies are 10 times bigger in revenue than all sports globally combined, including soccer and everything. Soccer, by the way, is the biggest global sport, obviously. He said his job is the last mile of distribution of films, which is a race to get attention. Getting movies out faster and faster has become more and more important. So he created AI tools. One is called Cinema Marketplace. It can get the creators of movies and the viewers closer together in data, showing what viewers are liking where. And then he showed a very cool thing from his system, Cinema Marketplace, that showed that when a new movie releases, it's not the most popular movie everywhere in the United States. And the data he was looking at was the United States. Even when a new movie comes out, different movies are number one in different places in the country because the parts of our country are in some ways very different from each other. I can personally attest to it, having lived in virtually every region of the United States at one time or another over the course of my life, except for the upper Midwest. That's the only place I haven't lived previously. He went on to say that imagination leads to innovation. Seeing is believing. That's why movies are so powerful and such a force in our society and the world. And then he mentioned Gen Z. Gen Z are fierce defenders of the planet, he said. So going forward, they want AI to help defend the planet, and they want to see that through movies and more. Next up was Edward Saatchi, who's one of the top people at the cutting edge of AI today. 
and he was talking about AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. If you can see in every single session this was discussed, it's the focus now. It is coming two to five years from now and the world will forever be changed. He said his belief is to create AGI and then let it evolve on its own, don't force it. He said he's been working on creating an AGI within a simulation for 10 years now. He created a simulated place called Sim Francisco, S-I-M Francisco. It's an all simulation. Users rate how realistic it is. He created an entity called Gaia, which is an emergent simulation engine. And then he showed Sim Francisco. And again, this is like an AGI autonomous agent that can act like a human and go all over San Francisco and do things. It's, it was a trip. He said he is growing an AGI in a simulation for now, this Gaia, but eventually this would be expressed in the real world. So that was Edward Saatchi. Next up, Tom Cledwin, who works for TED. And he said what they're working on at TED with AI is infectious generosity, how to get people to be more generous and to give more to the world. He said they focus on intention, having the right intention. They have a strong bias to action, which I can personally relate to, and reflection, meaning that they want their AI to look at what it's done and reflect on whether it's good or bad and keep focusing on value-added things for society and stay away from bad things. Next up was a woman who worked at SpaceX as the artist in residence and her, I'm gonna butcher her name, I apologize to you. Agnieszki Palat, she says she grew up in communist Poland before the fall of the Iron Curtain in 89. She had, when she was growing up, no phone, no car. All they had was a radio as a window to the outside world, but the only thing on the radio was communist propaganda. She said, however, her parents found a way to listen to Radio Free Europe so they could get information about the outside world, outside of communist Poland. So what she's doing was super cool. She's using Spot, the robot from Boston Dynamics to help her create art. Very interesting. She's using Spot as an apprentice. She'll say, Spot, go get this or that. And she'll say, Spot, step in the paint and step in a circle. And it'll create this circular pattern with its paws and all kinds of stuff. It was wild. She described herself as a portrait painter of machines, which is why she was the artist in residence for a while at SpaceX. She is teaching Spot to paint with a brush. She said from her perspective, technology is hope. And she's showing that breakthrough technology like an AI driven Spot can be used for good. So uh, the next speaker was Max Sills, who is the general counsel at Midjourney. Midjourney is like Dolly too. So this is a very senior guy at a cutting edge AI company. So he started off his talk with talking about how do we use words to get something. He said persuasion has a context, meaning you use different persuasion in different contexts. He said, while most people view an LLM hallucinating as a defect or a problem, he said it's not, it was designed that way. He said it, it's a function that they use to constrain the LLM to a particular domain. He said what they're working on in mid-journey is predictability. He said right now there's an information asymmetry, meaning an if information difference between humans and AI because in many cases where an AI is being used, we can't tell that. He said, is it possible to use an AI to help with motivation? Probably so. Check out the Pi app and the other app I mentioned earlier. 
He said an AI could help with speed, good thinking at 100 times our current rate. He said right now that they're working towards more transparency and prompts that are used in these algorithms. And they're actually trying to slow them down a little bit because they might act irrationally. So they're trying to slow the way the algorithms work a little bit. So he said what's coming are superior hybrid decision-making systems. Hybrid meaning AI-human hybrid. And that's what's coming. Interesting stuff. Final speaker at... TED AI Day 1, we're already at like 6.30 p.m. now from 9 a.m. in the morning, so it's been an insanely intense day. The guy's name was Oak Felder. He's a Grammy-winning record producer, and his talk was on AI and music, and he was very cool, really cool guy. He said, a song is a conduit of emotion. Boy, do I believe that. He said what he's trying to do now is pay it forward in his life. He said, AI scares the heck out of me. So then he started talking about a singer on, I forget if they were on The Voice or they were on American Idol, but they were one of the finalists recently. And the woman's name was Weeny. And so he did this demonstration. He said, what I'm going to do is use my AI program that I use to mix music now, because he's a record producer, and I'm going to convert my voice into, into we and these, and then see if you can tell the difference. So he recorded some lyrics from one of her songs, and then he played it. He said, now I'm not gonna tell you the order I'm playing it in. So he played an actual song from we and E, and then his mix where he transformed his voice using AI into we and E's. And could we tell the difference? And it was interesting when he played the first one, he played both of them. Then he said, how many people think the first one was the AI? And, you know, half the people stuck up their hands. And then the second one, the other half stuck up their hands. And he goes, let's try that again. And then he goes, here we go with number one. And the singing started, and then we and he came out on stage singing. And what a voice. Oh, man, no wonder she almost won one of these big shows. What a voice she had. So that was really cool to see her come out. So his final question was, is AI going to replace me, the record producer, his answer is no. And then he said something that many other speakers said that you've heard throughout these videos. AI plus the producer will replace producers not using AI. So AI basically will augment humans, but not replace them. We'll see about that. But what a fascinating, unbelievable, mind-blowing day this was at TED AI. Next week, we'll do a single video on TED AI uh, day two, which was only half a day, and I didn't stay for all of it because I left for the Applied AI conference. So that'll be one video, and then the Applied AI conference will be a second video, and then we'll be caught up with that. And please look for a special short from me. I need your feedback on something extremely important. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, and share. We're right this minute, we're at 980. We're 20 away from 1,000 and reaching that goal. So please subscribe, also like and share. Support us on Patreon. That will help us do more of these cutting edge conferences like TED AI that I can bring to you live like that. So support us on Patreon. A dollar a month from a number of you will make a difference. Please help. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.